I am the king. We march at once. What say this council? This is the moment the Crusaders lost Jerusalem. Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi had set a trap, and the Crusaders had marched right into it. Salah al-Din wants you to come out. He is waiting for you to make that mistake. We should meet the enemies of God. Aye. And so we shall. The Crusaders had occupied Jerusalem for almost 90 years, but now the Muslims, under the rule of Salah al-Din, were ready to take it back. And it all began with the Battle of Hittin, one of the most decisive battles in Crusader history. On June 30th, 1187, Salah al-Din's army marched into the heart of the Crusader Kingdom of Jerusalem. With the Crusaders holding their ground in a fortified encampment at the springs of Safuria, Salah al-Din needed another way to lure the Crusader army out. So on July 2nd, Salah al-Din and his army headed to the east and besieged the Crusader fortress of Tiberias. The Muslim army breached the fortress walls and seized the city by nightfall. When news reached the Crusader camp, Guy de Lusignan, the King of Jerusalem, held a war council, one which, unbeknown to him, would decide the fate of Jerusalem. The king's vassals persuaded him to march the army to the rescue of Tiberias, and at dawn on July 3rd, they set out. Salah al-Din's plan had worked, and the 20,000-strong Crusader army began the around 12-mile journey under the scorching July heat. As the Crusaders marched on, they soon realized that there was no escape from the harsh sun and the thick dust raised by the marching troops. When the Crusaders moved out from the village of Tur'an, Salah al-Din's fast-moving horse archers appeared from nearby hills, surrounding the Crusader army and cutting off their lines of retreat. Constant harassment and clashes slowed the Crusaders down further. Leaving just a small garrison to block the citadel at Tiberias, Salah al-Din and his troops headed back towards the Crusaders, blocking the road ahead. As nightfall approached, the exhausted Crusaders, slowed down by thirst and surrounded by Salah al-Din's horse archers, could not fight their way past. King Guy had no choice but to order his men to make camp where they stood, but the night ahead would bring no rest for the Crusaders. Salah al-Din's horse archers continued to harass the camp, some troops clashed with Crusaders and others set fire to perimeter tents throughout the night. Unable to rest, and with their water supplies diminishing, by the morning of July 4th, the exhausted Crusader army headed towards the springs of Hittin. Salah al-Din had already sent troops to block the valley and encircle the enemy. The Crusaders were surrounded, and despite desperate charges on Salah al-Din's troops, the Crusader army was broken up, and King Guy eventually surrendered. The Battle of Hittin was over, and the way to reconquering Jerusalem was now open. That night, Salah al-Din and his men celebrated their victory and began laying plans for their next move. Salah al-Din realized he needed to secure the coastline before capturing Jerusalem, so he dispatched his troops to conquer the coastal cities. Within two months of the victory at Hittin, Salah al-Din's forces had liberated most of the Levantine coastline. Now he turned his army towards the biggest prize in Palestine, Al-Quds. After a 10-day assault on the city, Balian of Ibelin came out to meet Salah al-Din to offer unconditional surrender. You offer terms, I ask none. I will give every soul safe conduct to Christian lands. Every soul. No one will be hurt. I swear to God. The Christians butchered every Muslim within the walls when they took this city. I am not those men. I am Salah al-Din. Salah al-Din. Then under these terms I surrender Jerusalem. On the 2nd of October, 1187, the Muslims entered Jerusalem after 88 years of Crusader occupation. Masjid al-Aqsa, which had been taken by the Crusaders, was restored to a Muslim place of worship. And Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi kept his promise, and the Crusaders were allowed to leave the holy city of Jerusalem in peace. <laughs>